All right, so let's continue looking at where the uh, formula for arctan came from, at least the derivative of arctan. Okay, consider uh, y equals tangent of x, but we're going to switch the x and y so that we have uh, tangent of y equals x. Tangent of y equals x. All right, um, let's go ahead and bring in the derivative operator to both sides of the equation. Implicitly differentiating, the outside function is tangent. We know that derivative is secant squared. Leave y alone times the derivative of y with respect to x. Derivative of x with respect to x is 1. Isolate the dy dx by dividing both sides of the equation by secant squared y. Noticing that we want an x here and not a y, we pull in another Pythagorean property from pre-cal. 1 plus tangent squared of y equals secant squared of y. one over one plus tangent squared of y. Continuing to make substitutions. Tangent of y up here was defined to be x. I don't know what that is. So replacing tangent of y with x and squaring it, we get x squared. So this is the derivative of the parent function. So if we said let's differentiate arctan of x, that would equal the fractional answer 1 over 1 plus x squared. Considering that we probably won't be finding the derivative of the parent function often, perhaps at composite arctan, arctan of u, applying the necessary changes in the chain rule. Everywhere I see x, I replace it with u. But don't forget to multiply by the derivative of the inside function du over dx. And this is what we saw at the beginning, the arctan formula, the derivative for the arctan. Okay. So let's look at one more derivation here. We're going to take a look at the derivative of arc secant of x, the parent function. Okay, so let's think about the regular graph y equals secant of x, but let's switch the x and the y for the inverse. So we're going to have secant of y equals x. Bring in the derivative operator. Implicitly differentiate, the outside function is secant, that derivative would be secant y tangent y times the derivative of y with respect to x, which is times dy over dx, which equals 1. Isolate dy dx. Let's divide both sides by the product secant y tangent y. Okay, and again, we want to get rid of the y's. Uh, we want a derivative in terms of x, so we're going to call on a Pythagorean property from pre-cal again. And the same one that we used in the last derivation, we're going to use again. So we want to get rid of tangent, so we're going to solve this equation for tangent. Extract the two roots. All right, coming over here, we're going to replace tangent y with either the positive or the negative root. Well, this would require us looking back at the arc secant, arc secant graph. And as you guys can see from your piece of paper there, the arc secant graph is increasing on its domain. So the rate of change will be positive. So we want to include the positive root over here for tangent of y.
All right, doing a further substitution, we know secant of y is equal to x. Replacing here x and for secant y, but squaring it, x squared minus 1. Okay, and as a note real quick right here, let's, uh, let's consider that the formula itself has an absolute value around x, or in our case u if it's composite. Okay, why is it necessary to have that absolute value there? Well, that requires, again, looking at the arc secant graph. And if you look at the arc secant graph, if you were to choose an x value that's to the left of the y-axis, you're actually choosing a negative x value, which would, requ would require that your answer become negative. But we know the final answer for arc secant needs to be positive because the rate of change for that graph is positive. So uh, in order to ensure that we do get a positive slope, we would want to absolute value um, the x value that we plug in. So that's where that comes in. All right, so further notation that you might see, the derivative with respect to x of arc secant is the formula above what we have here, is equal to this formula right here. All right, and considering that um, likely we're going to be differentiating composite functions for arc secant and not just the parent function, we're going to accommodate for that by putting a u in here okay, and making the adjustment here in the derivative. So the derivative of arc secant would be 1 over absolute value of u times the square root of u squared minus 1. And because we'll be using the chain rule, we'll multiply by du over dx. So it seems like a lot, but you guys can derive the three formulas that are necessary to find the derivatives of the inverse trig functions. All right, so now it's time to look at some examples, some things that you're going to be asked to do. So um, let's look at those right now. Okay, let's consider this function four times the arc sine of half x. Okay, let's say we want to find the slope on this graph. We're going to find the derivative. Um, one of the things that you know you need to be thinking about is that this is a composite function. So maybe over here you might want to put what u is, the inside function being one half x. And if you think about it, in the derivative formula, we need to know what du dx is. So in this case, when we differentiate, I'm going to leave this stacked as a rate of change, du dx, and I'm actually going to just differentiate um, this side of the equation and get a half. So instead of pulling a dx over here, when we integrate, I'm going to leave it this way because I know I need one half in my derivative formula. All right, so when I take a look at finding the derivative for this function, uh, 4 is just a constant multiplier, so I'm just going to leave that outside. Okay, or in this case, I guess maybe I'll just put it on top. 4 times, okay, where arc sine has du dx on top, so that would be our derivative, 1 half. Okay, and in the denominator, we have a square root, and the square root of the arc sine formula begins with 1 and then it's minus u squared. So it's going to be x over 2 squared. All right, at this point, if you're going to actually plug in a value for x to find a slope, I don't think I'd do any cleanup on it. I would just actually maybe do a little cleanup here, but I would put the x value in here and then try and simplify it. But at this point, I don't know what x is, so I am going to do a little simplifying. So cleaning up the top, I'm going to have 2, and in the denominator, okay, I'm going to have 1 minus x squared over 4 when I square the fraction. Okay, And just as a comment real uh, quick here, you likely won't see this in the back of the book. They've likely simplified this because this is a complex radical. Okay, So I'm going to perhaps move to the right a little bit to save some paper. I think I'm about out of that. Okay, So this derivative would be 2 over. Okay, get a common denominator with this fraction, so 1 would turn into 4 over 4. Uh, continuing to the right here, 2 over the square root of 4 minus x squared all over 4. And if you think about it, you can separate these, this radical into two radicals to where you'd have the square root of the numerator over the square root of the denominator. Okay, so this would actually all be over 2 
I pull out a square root of 4 is 2. So it becomes 2 over square root of 4 minus x squared all over 2. And what you could do is multiply by the reciprocal up here. Okay, so if you did that, okay, and brought this to the top and reciprocated, okay, the end result would be, um, I believe, 4 over the square root of 4 minus x squared. Okay, so just think about the progression here. All of these are correct. You were finished here, little clean up here, common denominator, okay, um, cleaned it up, thought about the properties of radicals multiplied by the reciprocal up here, okay, and this was our final cleaned up answer. Any of these are correct. Okay? If it's multiple choice, you just have to be prepared to simplify this into one of these forms right here. All right, for example two, we're going to find the derivative of arc cosine squared of x. Um, it may be helpful to go ahead and rewrite squared of x as x to the one half. Okay, and then again, remember that you're going to be using the arc sine formula, but making it negative. This is going to be considered your u, and in my formula, okay, I need u, I need u squared, and I need du dx. So u is x to the one half, du dx, okay, instead of pulling the dx over here, for my purposes, I'm going to leave it in this format. Okay, finding the derivative here is the power function the power rule. So one half x to the negative one half. Again the dx is over here so I'm good to go. Alright, coming over back into the formula, h prime of x equals, okay, and in the numerator, okay, we're going to have the derivative u prime, so I'm going to have one half x to the negative one half, and remember the arc cosine is actually the opposite of arc sine in the denominator, 1 minus u squared. Okay, so this right here I'd probably put back into radical notation. It's easier to see when you square that, but it's just going to become x. A little bit of cleanup. So I'll leave the 1 on top, the negative 1 on top, the 2 will come down. This is the square root of x in the denominator, so I'm going to have the square root of x down here. And then I yet have this down here as well. So times another square root, 1 minus x when I clean this up. Okay, and you can leave it like this, you're fine. Okay, however, it does simplify using properties of radicals. Notice I have two square roots. So I have two, okay, and I'm going to build one square root, and I'm going to actually just multiply these two together. But I'm going to leave them in factored form. This is likely the way that you would see this answer. Again, this is finished, but you really should do a little more here. At least take it to this point. If you notice you have like radicals, they're both square roots, then you can multiply the insides together. As a final example, let's find the derivative of an arctan function. So as you can see from the previous two examples, you know, actually using the formula is easy. It's the cleanup, it's the algebra that kind of gets, uh, we kind of get bogged down in. Okay, we're going to find the derivative of arctan. Uh, we know that this is our inside function. And the formula requires us to know u prime. The derivative is just 5. So f prime of x, because we've identified this as an arc tan, an inverse uh, tan function, we know that the derivative is going to be a fraction. u prime, or 5, is on top. Denominator for the arc tan is 1 plus u squared. So at this point, we've um, actually found the derivative. Um, there is a little bit of cleanup that uh, we would need to do here, and that would be maybe to foil this and collect it with the 1 here. Okay. All right, so looking at that algebra, and then moving across here, foiling this, 
25x squared plus, that'd be 15x plus 15 more x, so it'd be plus 30x plus 9. Collecting, perhaps a little rearranging too, 25x squared plus 30x plus 10. I see that a common factor can be pulled out, a common factor of 5, which would allow me to cancel with the numerator. So if I'm going to take it to that point, I probably need to go a little bit further. So in the denominator, I'm going to pull out a 5, and I'll have 5x squared plus 6x plus 2, allowing me to cancel the factors of 5. And as a final answer, all cleaned up, I can end up with this, um, this derivative answer. All right, so using the formula is not bad. It's pretty easy. The algebra gets a little bit intense, but the formula itself, like I said, isn't bad. Uh, it's just memorizing the formulas that might be a little bit, um, you know, difficult for us to do. But hopefully you saw in the, in the um, beginning of this and the previous video that there is a way to find those formulas if you uh, indeed do forget. So anyway, that's finding derivatives of the six trig functions and a couple of examples for that.